I'm the person who shows up at a Super Bowl party with a cake or like an Oscar party with a cake. Cakes for all occasions. That definitely that might have to be the title for this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I make so many cakes, it's ridiculous. Welcome to Nerdlandia. Welcome to Nerdlandia. It's like a little free library, but for nerdy conversations. I'm your host, Emily Case Buskirk. This episode is dedicated to the low stakes hobbies we all have and love. But don't get me wrong, today's guest, Allie, is very serious about baking. We talk about her favorite baking projects, the local eateries we frequent for sweet and savory bites, and her spouse Brian's pizza making obsession. I was so inspired from our conversation that I even tried making cinnamon rolls from scratch for the first time. So stick around to hear how that turns out. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am really excited to talk about all things sweet. What was your introduction to baking like? My mom introduced me to baking um, when I was young. I don't remember how old I was. I was probably in like maybe like third or fourth grade. But we started just making chocolate chip cookies. And we just had like a really solid, easy chocolate chip cookie recipe. And we would make it all the time. That was all she really like actually taught me to make from scratch. But it was a Betty Crocker recipe and it was so good. And I still make it sometimes. But there was one year over spring break. I think I was in middle school. I decided I was going to sell them to my mom's coworkers. So she like took an order form to work on like the first day of spring break on the Monday of spring break. And she got, took a bunch of orders from her coworkers. And then over the next couple of days, I made, I don't remember how many dozen cookies I made. It was a lot though, or at least it felt like a lot. And I sold them to all of her coworkers. I think I made like $60. That is like so cool though. It was fun. My mom, I was so excited I made $60. And my mom was like, actually, we need to take out your supplies. I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, I bought the flour. I bought the sugar. <laughs> I bought the containers for them to go to my coworkers. So we need to deduct $30. So I only made $30. Oh my gosh. She like drives a hard bargain there. Jeez. She She wanted me to be a successful (laughs) businesswoman and understand, I don't know, your your supplies cost money, but it was fun. I had this whole idea that I was going to like make these cookies, sell them. And I was worried that Betty Crocker was going to like find out about me and like come after me and sue me. But then I was like, no, I changed the recipe because I don't put the salt in. (laughs) Like, it's Mm. different. Yeah, yeah. Clearly a totally different thing. Yeah. (laughs) That is so cool, though. I mean, your first big entrepreneurial effort. It was a week. A week of being a real real cookie dealer. So Love it. (laughs) Yeah, my mom's chocolate chip cookie recipe, I'm still convinced, is the best. She uses, I think it's just like the recipe that's on the Toll House chocolate chip cookies bag, but she just always does it perfectly. Like she has amazing technique. Mm -hmm. They don't taste too sweet. I mean, it's a very sweet dessert, but Mm -hmm. um, I feel like she always puts in a good amount of salt. And then of course the good vanilla, she... (laughs) Oh yeah, She has that. I know Garden would be proud. Baking is definitely her big thing. And so, yeah, I mean, for me, like that would be mine. And yeah, I don't know why the chocolate chip cookie is always the classic. It's like, it's like everyone's introduction. I feel like yes. like, about making croissants. Like you, you start with a chocolate chip cookie, you get that yeah, and you're like, yeah. okay, what else can we do? Totally. And then this isn't really baking, but um, pancakes were also a big thing oh. um, growing up. My grandma uh, had this like amazing recipe and she would do them like on her stove, like in a cast iron skillet oh, and nice. use like a ton of, I think, canola oil and they got like crispy on the edges. Yes. Oh my gosh. My mom did hers the same way. It was a really uh, thin batter and it was a lot of yes. oil. So they would get, yeah, crispy on the edges and then kind of puffy in the middle. The best. Oh man. Yeah. Incredible. She always called them fluffy, not stuffy. That was her motto, I guess. Love that. Her slogan, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think she has a slogan for her pancakes. That's cute. Yeah. And of course, uh, I have to bring up that you just had a kid, which is incredible. I did. And as we're like talking about these like childhood memories, what projects are you excited to share with your kid as as she grows up? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I just had a baby two months ago she's eight weeks today which is just like bonkers um I imagine we'll start with cookies just like I did and then we'll eventually do cakes and 
all kinds of stuff. But yeah, definitely excited to start her on baking when she can, you know, hold her head up. She's not quite there yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sorry. I know I get like ahead of myself. Like, obviously, she has a little ways to go until you get to incorporate like, yeah, or she gets to like help out in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. um, But yeah, it's like fun to think about. (laughs) No, it's so much fun to think about. And I think that's like with having a kid, that is one of the things that we were most excited about is like, like especially being in the kitchen with her and like cooking and baking and teaching her like how to crack eggs and sift flour and mix things and yeah we're just so excited for all that stuff and I imagine we'll probably start with cookies because they're easy they're quick and everybody loves cookies so yes it's just the time-honored tradition Mm -hmm. but yeah what do you think it is about baking that brings you back to the kitchen um, for different projects or even just to revisit some of your favorite recipes I think I keep coming back to baking over and over again because I like sweets (laughs) like valid I I like to I like to eat sweets and I like to share what I bake too so those two things I love making something and then running them around town to all of our friends. Um, yes. Doing like bun runs or cake runs or whatever it is I made run. But then also I like, I feel like over the past like two ish years, the things that I've been trying to make have been getting like a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult. So like doing more layer cakes, which are somewhat difficult. They're not terrible or trying to do like a laminated dough and things like that. So I think the increased challenge is fun where it's like, okay, I figured out how to do this. Now, what else can I try to figure out how to do? What's a little bit more difficult to do that is going to be fun, is going to be taste good and that I can share with people. So. Oh my gosh, totally. I love being recipients of the bakes. <laughs> it's always like fun to see, um, to see what you've done. I always am just like impressed with with those things that, that you do. Um, and I, I agree that layer cakes, it's like not difficult, but it's like a process and leveling them off or deciding that it's okay if they look kind of like... Lopsided. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> like, do. I usually do. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like, it's extra considerations that you don't really need to think about for other things. So. Yeah, definitely. And layer cakes are fun because they're like, they're not too difficult, but they look like they can yes. look kind of impressive. So it's fun to like show up to a party with like a two, three layer cake and everyone's like, oh my God. And you're like, oh, this wasn't that bad. <laughs> Yes, it is a showstopper, yeah. to, I guess, uh, stealing from Great British Bake Off there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, are there any chef celebrities or bakers that you that you follow or that you really look up to? Yeah, I don't I don't think I have like a whole lot of folks that I like really look up to and follow in terms of chefs or um, bakers. But the one that like intrigues me the most I guess I could say is Claire Saffitz she um yeah yeah because I'm I'm really interested in like laminated doughs right now for some reason and I want to try her croissant recipe and I know she has a cookbook called dessert person as well Mm -hmm. um I don't have the book but um I end up watching a lot of her videos on New York Times cooking to see how yes how we're just for fun you know just on a Friday night I sit there and watch baking videos oh my gosh yes always um but yeah I would say she's probably like the closest I have to like a baking icon why do you think you're so interested in um in laminated pastry right now they're a little bit more complicated they take a little bit more time and I think anyone who like has a little bit of understanding of how they're made knows that they're like kind of complicated. So I want to try to figure out how to do them because I feel like they're kind of impressive, which is maybe a silly reason to figure out how to do them. Also, they just are so good. I love the rich buttery flavor and texture of the croissant and the crispiness of it. Um, I was going to do try to make croissants over Christmas break, but I got really intimidated about the recipe. So I did a Queen Amon instead, which is also a laminated dough, but not, it was, the recipe appeared to be a little bit easier. So I did that one instead. And it was still really good. Nice. I guess one thing I've seen, especially when it comes to like pies is like some people are really into like lard for the fat or um, oh, I mean, yeah. butter is probably the more standard one. I don't know. Do you have any like strong opinions about that? <laughs> not really. I haven't done a whole lot of pies. I did three pies over um, this last Thanksgiving. I was probably like 25 weeks pregnant though and realized that making three pies in one day was probably a little bit too much for me. (laughs) But that was the first time I had made a lot of or 
really any significant number of pies. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't have strong opinions on the crust and stuff, but that's fair. They all turned out really good. So nice. Yeah, that is one of my um, baking goals. Actually, now that I think about it, I haven't I haven't thought about it in a second. But yes, over the holidays. I got really into pies, I think particularly for Thanksgiving. I had never done that before. And um, I didn't, I just did like a store-bought crust because I was scared. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, doing the fillings isn't that hard. And I had to buy multiple crusts. So I just did multiple pies and it was, it was a hit. So I was like, yeah, I should really try to push myself to um, get outside my baking comfort zone. I really love like lemony desserts. So I would love to do like a key lime pie. Yeah, lemon meringue sounds hard. <laughs> so maybe not that one immediately. But yeah, so I guess that's where my brain's been up. Yeah, I don't think a lemon or a key lime pie either because I feel like they would both be custard based, which custard's not too difficult to make. Yeah, yeah, and for then sure. Your crust for that would probably be more of like a graham cracker, mm-hmm. like crushed crust, True. which is a little also easier easy. than yes. doing a dough. One funny thing about my pie extravaganza from Thanksgiving was that for some reason I lost my rolling pin. I, I don't know how someone loses a rolling pin, <laughs> but I managed to lose my rolling pin. Oh no! I was making two of my pies required a crust, like a like a roll out crust. I didn't have my rolling pin. So I was like, what the heck am I going to do? So I put the dough um, between two um, sheets of parchment paper and I used a wine bottle to roll out yes. the crust. And it worked, but I felt super silly. One, for losing <laughs> my rolling pin. Two, I had to use a wine bottle. Yes, that is one thing I've noticed about when I when I bake things and share them with people. It's like, even if I feel like the process went wonky at some point, everybody just thinks it's delicious. Nobody knows about the errors you made. So, yep. Yep. you know, it's always a win-win. Same. I'll like serve something to someone and I'll be like, oh, it's not my best. It's a tad overbaked. And they'll be like, <laughs> it's wonderful. It's fine. No biggie. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. I also used a wine bottle when I tried to make pasta. Once again, pandemic project. Yep. I have not tried to make pasta again. It was not my favorite thing in the world. Yes, we. I also tried to make pasta during the pandemic <laughs> before we had a pasta like crank, and I oh, yeah. used a rolling pin. It's so hard to get it thin, and it ended up being like thick, almost like stroganoff noodles. But we ate it with spaghetti yes. sauce, so it was yes. kind of weird. But pasta is fun if you have a crank. <laughs> I yeah, it. yeah, I feel the right weird. things for it. Yeah, I know. I could definitely see that. That's also a good segue because I wanted to ask about your husband's uh, pizza, what I want to call this, expeditions? Yeah. <laughs> pizza experiments? <laughs> yeah, we eat so much pizza. <laughs> he's like just really into making pizza Mm -hmm. it's like a hyper fixation of sorts it is um what's it been like having like a front row seat to that adventure um it's been fun I usually hit a point where I'm like okay we need to cool it on the pizza for (laughs) at least two weeks because we've had it so many times it's been a lot of fun though I feel like our two kind of interests, mine in baking, his his in pizza, kind of started at the same time, but they never really like intersected. They kind of have just moved along in like a parallel way. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's been a lot of fun. He's really, really gotten into it. We have so many pizza baking items. And then he, yeah, he does all different types. He does Detroit style. He'll do, um, sometimes he'll do them in the skillet or a cast iron skillet. Sometimes he'll put them right on the Uh, pizza steel we also have a uni pizza oven for outside in the summer which is fun to sit out there with a drink and those are great no it's been a lot of fun and he's always trying to like do different doughs and different things and messing with the amount of yeast that he has and stuff it's just it's a whole whole production (laughs) but yeah we eat so much pizza (laughs) You know, that, yeah, that would be a side effect of that. But I actually had some amazing pizza last night. So have you been to The Hub? Um, They have like Friday pizza nights now. Ooh, I have not been there, but I saw that they're doing that. Yes, it is so good. We had like, they call it the Idaho and we picked it because it was pretty unique. They're really good at like having these unique ones. Nice. Um, But yeah, it was like super thinly sliced, um, like potato, just like, but yeah, like really, really like thin sliced. And then some bacon and some some scallion. Okay. So 
it was really really good what kind of sauce was it like a white sauce it was yeah it was like a white sauce it Mm. this is gonna sound weird um but it totally worked but sometimes it kind of reminded me of like white gravy almost yes i don't know i don't know how to describe that but yeah and the the crust is really really good we haven't had a bad pizza from them honestly they're kind of my favorite place for pizza in lincoln now so definitely check that out when you're not tired of pizza (laughs) yeah no and so that's the other thing is his sauce recipe that he uses for his red sauce it makes like I it feels like it makes like 20 pizzas I don't know what's going on it's so it's like a production level like quantity (laughs) so we're eating like red sauce pizza for weeks and I'm just so I'm I love like a white sauce pizza or a pesto pizza but we just get stuck in this red sauce so you said Idaho pizza and I was like that's Mm -hmm. gotta be a white sauce pizza yes so good yes it is and I think they have like the same menu up for the entire month okay. so you'll have to go and check that out and get yes. a little break from your from, pizza from <laughs> pepperoni red sauce pizza for sure <laughs> we really like vix pizza yeah yeah that one's good too they have a really fun breakfast pizza that has tater tots on oh, it so amazing we only had two slices of leftover pizza and we did that for breakfast even though it's not a breakfasty like it was really perfect with like the bacon and oh yeah the, the bacon potatoes. and potatoes yeah that'd be so yeah. good it was amazing. But yeah, to jump back into the baking <laughs> sweets, are there any like favorite local bakeries here in town that you go to a lot? We go to Goldenrod a decent amount because you can't, You, I mean, the crumble bun is just so mm. good and classic. Iconic. Yeah, so good. But we've started going to, uh, is it La Cartier on 70th and O? They do a lot of like croissants, like chocolate croissants, regular croissants, almond croissants, macaroons, torts, tiramisu's. And then they also do like breakfast sandwiches and things like that and lunch sandwiches. So we've been going there quite a bit. It's also conveniently on the way home from our daughter's doctor's office. So we stopped, oh, nice. <laughs> we stopped there on our way home to get ourselves a treat after her appointment. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, Le Cortier, right? Yes. Okay, okay yes. yes, yes. Um, We get their bread a lot. And I did really like, I think they also have a breakfast pizza Mm -hmm. and other things I've had. I think I've tried their cinnamon rolls maybe, Um, but yeah, they're 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 solid. They have really good stuff. Yeah, their bread's really good. They do pizza crust as well that we get sometimes when Ryan doesn't want to make pizza crust. (laughs) Amazing. Very good all the way around. I think their pizza crust is like kind of sourdoughy, which yeah. is kind of fun. I also have to bring in um, Butterfly Bakery into this discussion. Love them. Yeah, very good. They made the cake for our um, rehearsal dinner. Oh, and nice. It was very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that they recently, uh, they got a new owner, but it seems like they're mm-hmm. doing all the same wonderful things that they did before. So they're my neighborhood bakery. So, um, so yeah, I always try to go and support them. Nice. Um, rabbit hole is pretty good too. Sometimes when I'm working, we'll walk my coworkers and I walk down a rabbit hole and get, get some sweets. That's always fun. Yeah. It's nice that there's like something in downtown Lincoln too. We did already get to talk about some of your like bakes, but were there any like big like wins or maybe baking disasters that you wanted to recount? I don't feel like I have any like any disasters that are like huge everything's like mm, I overbaked that a little bit but it's still edible <laughs> yeah when I was making the queen amon over Christmas though it gets baked in a um skillet oh normally queen amon's if you go like to a pastry shop they're usually like individual cups but the New York Times recipe is like it's called a classic queen amon so it's baked in a skillet and I don't know if this is a baking fail or not but I kind of felt it was a mistake, I guess. Um, I pulled the skillet out of the oven and then Brian was looking at it. My husband was looking at it and he went to grab the handle for getting that had just come out of the oven. Uh, yes. He just burnt his oh. whole hand. And so he did that and then it had to go back in the oven for a little bit. And then I pulled it back out when it was done and I was looking at it. And then I went to grab the handle, forgetting that it had just come out of the oven. And I just burnt oh, my no. whole hand. It was awful. Uh, yeah, that's, like, so hard to remember. Like, even if yeah. you tell yourself, like, you know, five minutes beforehand, it's like, hey, guess what? <laughs> that yeah, is hot. hot. <laughs> yeah, you're not used to the handles of skillets being that hot. Yes. And then I was also 30 weeks pregnant at the time and just very emotional. So I just felt so stupid that I had grabbed this handle right after my husband had 
and I cried for like <laughs> hours just feeling so silly oh. about it. Um, so I would say that was like a fail. I don't know if it's a baking fail, but it's a fail that happened mm. while baking. Oh, what happens to all of us and the fact that you were... <laughs> Sorry to use this language, baking a human inside of you at the same time. I was. I was an oven. I was a literal <laughs> oven and I thought the pan came out of the oven and I grabbed it and oh, oh that was so frustrating. But the the Kia yeah. on turned out great. I took it to our New Year's party and it was amazing. It was a hit. If you could like make a candle of like, I don't know, some kind of like baked good, mm. what would you choose? Yeah, that's a good question. Um so this is this is interesting question for me because I like really sweet, rich things to eat, but smell wise, mm-hmm. I don't like super strong like smells in candles, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I think I would do like a like an almond croissant candle that's like kind of Ooh. just like it's not as heavy as like a vanilla candle because I think sometimes those mm-hmm. can get a little a little too yeah. strong. Or yeah. like a sugar cookie candle. I don't really care for those either. But like an almond croissant candle, I feel like would be light, but like nice. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Like some like almond extract, maybe a hint of vanilla, like very mm-hmm. subtly, kind of like some rich butter. That is a really, really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Yes. I would definitely love like a um, like lemon bar um, would probably have to be my choice. Yeah, Cause like the tart, I, I really like citrusy candles anyway. So mm-hmm. like I need that like kind of tartness. So yeah. Love a good lemon bar too. So good. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and again, like butterfly bakery probably has like some of the best here in town. So. Mm. Nice. Um, but yeah, if you opened your own bakery, what would that look like? I don't know. I don't, I don't have a huge desire to open a bakery. I would much rather just work in one like I don't yes. know, like, business and run the bakery and stuff but I would I wouldn't mind like working in one maybe mm-hmm. just like on the weekends just like a side little side gig you know I would love to like yeah work in a bakery and roll out cinnamon rolls every day and make cakes and frost things and I think that'd be a lot of fun yes sounds like there wouldn't really be like you wouldn't want to just do one job like you would kind of just want to like help out with like anything I think so yeah nice I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about like developing recipes though. Mm, fair. Cause like, like you, like you, I feel like it's super complicated and I don't mm-hmm. fully understand like the science behind. That is fair. Baking, like what makes something rise. I should probably learn. Um, so I'm more <laughs> just following recipes that I like. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it'd be fun to work in a bakery and get up early and roll everything out and Yes, definitely. I would love to work at a bakery and be like the decorator person. Like that Mm -hmm. is one of the steps that I love the most, um, but I don't really get to do it as much. And I don't have a ton of equipment either, but I love like frosting cupcakes. Um, I like piping, icing or like writing things. But yeah, it's not a something I've gotten to like indulge myself in as much because I just feel like there's like so much equipment that it takes. And it's just like, well, I wouldn't use it that much. So I yeah. can't really justify it to myself. So. Definitely. I, yeah, I got a, a decorating kit for, I think my birthday a couple years ago and I haven't used it as much as I thought I would, but it is fun to like, yeah, pipe out little, little blobs of frosting. Right <laughs> yes. and stuff. Doing it for someone's birthday is like probably one of my biggest um, motivators to, to doing that. But yeah, the last time I got to bake was for a, for a dinner party like in the end of April and okay. it's just like oh it's just like always so fun when I do this but <laughs> what did you what did you make so belated um St. Patrick's Day thing and mm-hmm. so I did a Guinness stout cupcake and oh, yeah. it turned out really good yeah it That's was like so good. <laughs> it was one of those where you know you like start a new baking recipe and you're like this is looking weird because yep. <laughs> it's like I had the beer in there and I was like trying to mix it with things without trying to like I guess agitate it too much but you want to get like incorporated and it's just yep. like this is just like really lumpy and weird looking <laughs> but yeah I mean I put it in the oven and it turned out great um so sometimes 
I guess that's the nice thing about baking is that um, I definitely don't understand it from a scientific standpoint. So sometimes you just got to like trust the process and it all turns out. So. Yep. Just, just hope your recipe <laughs> understands the process better than, better than we do. Yes. So like, what's the next thing you're going to bake or is there anything that you've like made recently that you were really happy with? So yeah, since I had um, our baby, since I had Rowan, I haven't done a whole lot of baking. I made some cookies the other day. That were okay. Um, they were chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. Otherwise, I still have the croissants on my list to do eventually when when I have the time. That recipe on New York Times is like a two-day ordeal for it to let them rise and everything. So I would need um, probably a weekend to do it. Otherwise, I'll probably just keep making like random cakes for random things. I'm, yes. I'm the person who shows up at a Super Bowl party with a cake or like an Oscar party with a cake. For sure. That's the other thing I like about being a somewhat regular baker is when you wake up on a Saturday morning and decide chocolate cake sounds good. You usually have everything already in your pantry. To True. Make it, and you can just start making it, which is really nice. Cakes for all occasions. That, Definitely. that might More have cake. to be the title for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I make so many cakes. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, when you're like talking about these like multi-day things... That is where I get intimidated about baking because I've always wanted to make um, cinnamon rolls. I love oh, cinnamon yeah. rolls so much, um, yeah. but it's scary. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a really good and somewhat easy cinnamon roll recipe okay. I can send you. It's a really yes. good introduction one because it, okay. it's called a one hour cinnamon roll recipe. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the I idea is, that. yeah, start to finish it's one hour, including rise time. Um, nice. But that was one of the first ones that I did, um, and that's the recipe I used to figure out the temperature for yeast, because the first couple of times I made it, my my liquid was too hot, and I kept killing the yeast, and they wouldn't rise. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, cinnamon rolls are good. They're fun. Fun to roll out and frost and stuff, so. I know, and it, like, looks so pretty. You're, like, scattering the, like, cinnamon and sugar and, like, yeah. So, <laughs> and I just, I mean, cinnamon rolls are just, like, one of my favorite baked goods like of all time I want to try it myself but I don't know I guess it's also like when you know that you can just go and support Fine. somebody who's already doing it <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah. yeah um what's your favorite part of the cinnamon roll oh I mean is it too cliche to just like say that like the most center part mm -hmm. with the <laughs> like just like the perfect little like swirl of cinnamon and then there's like still some frosting yeah. um yeah it's all like gooey yeah it's, I I kind of think anyone who doesn't have that answer can't be trusted <laughs> like if someone's like I don't like the center of a cinnamon roll I'm like what I don't think we can be friends. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. My favorite part is also the center. It's the mm. perfect, like, gooey bite. And then if it's still warm from the oven. Oh. Yes. Any other thoughts about baking that you wanted to share before we head into the ending segment? I have enjoyed it so much. And I guess I'm just so thankful for my mom for teaching me. I remember during the pandemic being really thankful that my mom had, like, taught me the basics of baking because it just... Yes gave me something to do so oh my gosh totally shout out to the moms for uh for introducing us to the chocolate chip cookie recipe <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that leads us into the recurring ending segment what's your favorite thing at the moment so this was kind of a hard question for me to answer because I'm still on maternity leave so I don't my like sole focus is um keeping a baby alive right now you're doing um, amazing <laughs> um which is doing great so it's going well uh, yes but I've started doing um afternoon tea for myself Ooh. so just like around three or four I'll make myself a cup of tea if I have a cookie on hand or like a piece of toast with peanut butter on it or something I'll just like have a little little snack and a cup of tea um and I've really been enjoying that it kind of um, maternity leave for me at least has been getting kind of long Fair. um so having that little like snack towards the end of the day before my husband gets home has been has been nice so I love that I'm kind of sad that um the U.S. is a culture that doesn't value um the, the afternoon tea 
and doesn't yes. value the afternoon nap. I'm like, yes. if I had both these things in my daily life, I would be way happier. And I mean, there's nothing holding me back per se, Yeah, but that's, I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I actually, so my husband and I had that exact conversation where there was one random afternoon. I had a cup of tea and I told him, I wish that this was like a thing here. Yes. And he was like, make it a thing. And I was like, heck yeah, I'm going to make a cup of tea every day at four. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Um, do you have like any favorite kinds of tea that you're drinking right now? Oh, I just love a classic Earl Grey with a little bit of milk and a little bit of vanilla syrup. Just, yeah, it just makes it like a little bit sweet. It feels a little bit indulgent. Um, it's good. I don't know what my cutoff is. Um, I feel like I'm fairly sensitive to caffeine, so I can't usually have anything too caffeinated in the afternoons. Um, Mm -hmm. But I love having herbal tea. So I'll either have it at work when I need to pick me up, or we also like to have it in the evenings. So kind of have something like cozy and a little bit special. Um, We like the loose leaf from Artemis tea, but sometimes, I mean, we also just have a lot of like random teas from like celestial seasonings or whatever yeah. else we find at the store so. say I have boxes upon boxes of tea <laughs> and I just keep buying more and it's yes. like yeah I have so many <laughs> um yeah I agree with you on the caffeine though my afternoon cup is usually a decaf earl gray <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So my favorite thing is it's hard for me to find a craft that I like, but I finally found one and it's gem painting. And I don't know, I really love it. Like it's because this gives it like kind of like that pixel art um, Mm -hmm. vibe, but then it's shiny. Like it doesn't require like really any brain cells from you, which is all I want. Like Mm -hmm. we already make so many decisions through the day. I just want a thing where the decision has been made for me. Um, All I have to do is like pick out which design I think is the cutest and and work on that it's great for like also listening to audiobooks or your podcast at the same time or music definitely and I like that those ones are mm-hmm. smaller yeah I definitely definitely recommend it as an activity nice cool mm-hmm. I'll have to try those because I like I cross stitch sometimes and those kind of remind me of cross stitching a little bit yeah yeah um I, I feel like I'd probably enjoy those as well you could do it like a gem painting party kind of I like know a, that's like what I want to do stitch. Yeah, that'd be fun because those yes. paint and sips are fun. But I feel like anything that you make at that, I'm like, I wouldn't hang that on my wall. Those cute little gem things I would oh, definitely I like put in a gallery wall or something. Yes, yes. I need to think of like a fun rhyme for that. Um, gem and jam. We can like, ooh, music, gem jam. jam. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> But yeah, thanks so much for being on the podcast and geeking out about baked goods with me. Uh, It was just really fun to get to talk about Midwest specialties and excited to see what you bake up next. Yeah, I'm too. I'm ready to get back in the kitchen and start, start whipping something up. As a postscript to this sweet conversation, I gotta say it did not take long for Allie to make something new. Her next bake was tiramisu cinnamon rolls that she made for Brian's birthday. As of this recording, I get to try them tomorrow and I can't wait, they look amazing. As for my own cinnamon roll quest, or my cinnamission, as I've been calling it in my head, it ended up a success. It was definitely one of those processes I was not feeling confident in, especially when I was trying to knead the dough. And I also had to use Allie's wine bottle trick for a rolling pin, but the little swirls turned out so cute. And even though they're more like mini rolls, that just makes them even more irresistible to me. I can't wait to make another batch. And huge shout out to Allie for getting me out of my comfort zone and sharing her baking knowledge even while she was on maternity leave. So if you want to make any of the bakes we've talked about in this episode, you can find recipes on the Nerdlandia bulletin board linked in the show notes. Up next, brewing up a cat cafe. Emily is a vet tech turned cat foster mom who's also trying to start a local cat cafe called Stray by the Bay. We talk about the animals she's fostering right meow, the progress her nonprofit has made, and whether we really need to keep up the whole cat person, dog person divide. That episode comes out on June 12th. Until next time. Nerdlandia is hosted, produced, and edited by Emily Case Buskirk. Theme song and ending credit music by Keith West. Cover artwork by Ellen Stebbings. Additional music by Ruin and Alexi Kapluski from Pixabay. 
their cinnamon rolls were like amazing, like really sweet. But then I think there's like a little bit of like orange in the frosting. And so just like really like counterbalanced in an amazing way where it wasn't like sugar bomb. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I will eat an entire cinnamon roll like that. And, but then I'll like kind of feel the hammer of sugar hit me afterwards. <laughs> so. Definitely, definitely. Thank you.